Okay, it's been moved to table to December uh, 11th by Trustee um, Wilson. Second. Second by Trustee McMullen. Roll call, please. Trustee Williams. Aye. Trustee Wilson. Aye. Trustee Brooks. Both aye. Trustee McMullen. Both aye. Trustee Payton. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. And Mayor Kevin. Aye. Uh, at this moment, we'll have a uh, general public. Our attorney will read. <laughs> Visitors are always welcome to all public meetings of the Board of Trustees. To comment on an issue, persons wishing to speak will be called upon by the Mayor during Section E, General Public Comment. The interested party will stand, identify themselves, and make their comment. In order to give proper consideration to all items on the agenda, the Mayor will limit participants in the debate and will close off protracted, repetitive, irrelevant, or abusive remarks. The Village has passed a public comment policy that limits comments uh, by an individual to three minutes. Uh, citizens shall not yield unused time to other speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, today we have Ms. Deborah Scott. Top of the evening to everyone. Looks like everyone that gained a couple of pounds had a very happy Thanksgiving. I'm glad this podium is in front of me, so I had a real happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> but, um, First off, I want to give kudos to Public Works because I constantly hear them out of my bedroom window. They're out there taking care of that snow. Um, I can't comment on all other communities, but I know our community has been doing great. The only but that I have is if you can go throughout the community and knock the snow off the signs, that would be helpful for the people that don't live in the community. Maybe. Okay. I'm missing the Speedway too. Um, but as uh, chairman of University Park Senior Citizens Committee, um, you know that we give back to the community and we always try to give a donation to organizations in the community. And tonight, I do see someone here representing Illinois Flames. That was one of the communities that, I mean, one of the uh, organizations that our committee selected this year that we'd like to give a donation to. Just like we receive them, we also give them. We kind of like, hate to say recycle money, but we put it back into the community. Okay. So could we have a, could I have a representative from Illinois Flames? <coughs> this is an annual donation that our committee gives to your first as a recipient, Illinois Flames. And, um, I don't know if there anyone's here from. No. Right on. The team is working. Okay. I've, I've, I've watched them grow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other is the uh, University Park Youth Athletic Association. I'm sure the weather probably stopped anybody from coming in tonight, possibly. But. Uh oh. I'm sorry. I can't see back there. I'm sorry. So this is our donation to you. Oh, thank you so much. Senior citizens. Thank you. We're looking cute. Oh. Oh. So thank you, everyone. Have safe holidays. Um, try not to eat as much as I've been eating. Okay. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Stroud. Just a uh, note. I always pay attention. Thank you for your condolence on TV. I caught the meeting when I got back. Thank you. Yeah, it I does agree. it does mean a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I've you. done it and been there, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for acknowledging. Uh, no one else has. Uh, did you want to come up and say something? Oh, okay. Oh, and we have no one else on the list, so we will continue into the agenda. Thank you, Ms. Strauss, for your contributions. And God bless those that she gave it to. Okay. Action items, unfinished business, there is none. Um, new business, first and second reading, an ordinance of the Village of University Park, Willow Cook County, Illinois, amending a policy prohibiting sexual harassment for the Village of University Park, Willow Cook County, Illinois. Is there a motion? So moved.
by Trustee Brooks, second. second by Trustee McMullen. Questions, concerns, comments? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Brooks. Roll side. Trustee Brooks. Aye. Trustee Brooks. Roll side. Trustee McMullen. Roll side. Trustee Page. Aye. Trustee Brooks. Aye. 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 Thank you. F to B. First, second, and third reading the ordinance authorizing the execution of an intergovernment agreement by and between the village of the University for Willowcook County, Illinois, and the Board of Education of Homewood Flossmoor Community School District 233 for um, reciprocal. I'm sorry, my glasses are bad tonight. Reciprocal reporting system. There's no period time. Is there a motion? So moved. First move by Trustee Brooks, second by Trustee McMullen. Comment? Question. Question? Yes. So is this is this to call the so when I read the oh, notes, is to call the police department look like home with them have police department? You'll call them? She wasn't here, we discussed it. Just me and um manager pay. The um, agreement is only in reference to university. Park. The agreement is only reference to university park residents. Just say there's a sporting event or something occurs and it involves a university park resident, either on camp on their property or there's something going on in regards to a dispute. It just allows them to uh, fire a police department that there's a dispute going on between students and agents. Yeah. And actually, it's commonly being done now. Uh, we actually had conversations uh, with the chiefs about doing a generalized agreement um, for all the school districts in the area, uh, to just to share information in regards to specific student activities, such as fights. You uh, had a shooting uh, death of a young man uh, in one of the school districts. Um, and so that information is shared, so we don't have any retaliation because there's alleged retaliation having to do with 201U in the high school. If this agreement is not in place, it's difficult for us to kind of communicate because uh, juvenile information or student information. Any others? Yeah, um, Trustee Brooks. Yeah, Trustee Brooks. Trustee Page. Trustee Page. Trustee Page. Trustee Page. Trustee Page. Trustee Page. So it's almost like dealing with the school resource officers and the dean. You're saying that they're, they will be in contact with our police department. I hear that in which we don't have a juvenile division, but there'll be someone to follow up, in which that's one of my biggest complaints is that we do need a juvenile division so that this would be more understandable for when trustee, or when the trustees question something like this, this would, you know, put it in the perspective that we are more in line of working with uh, uh, the school district when it comes to communication. And I appreciate that because my concern is not that they're contacting. Um, it is a little bit. Scarf. Just start. Sorry. Sorry. It is a little bit about the University Park Police Department because. Uh, so if a, a student did something in Homewood, and Homewood Police might handle it one way, and then University Park Police may handle it a different way. And I don't know. Do we have? training to deal with you because if we get a resource officer he goes through different training and i just don't want a university park student double in trouble compared to another student my same concern with creek money high school because if something happens creek money police gonna deal with it and then i don't want a up student to get double well, first punished. first we wouldn't have legal authority to do any enforcement action because school is not in our jurisdiction. So we wouldn't be able to get any enforcement action. All it is is information sharing. Not us enforcing any laws that are broken or anything like that. It's just them providing us information. Like an intelligence alert, intelligence group bulletin. And uh, just for the clarification as far as juvenile officers are concerned, majority of University Park Police officers are certified juvenile officers. Uh, 
they completely trained in the PTI, PTI graduates, it was part of their curriculum. I know they don't commonly have somebody assigned to do a job every day, and I understand that. Uh, but we do have officers that do a walkthrough of the middle school and, and actually get involved in a lot of juvenile situations. But I do agree with Trustee Brooks. Uh, I think we does need to be a dedicated juvenile officer, which comes to having a dedicated investigation division, and which comes to manpower and staffing, and I agree with him 100%. Um, Cree uh, successfully has implanted uh, a school resource officer in the high school. Um, the village at this point doesn't have the means to provide resources to uh, the middle school because we have to first get our streets uh, handled by having enough officers on the streets and doing the appropriate hiring. Uh, the Fire and Police Commission has been made aware of that. Uh, we're looking for academy dates, and once those are established, they won't be hiring police as well as firemen. Uh, to kind of fulfill those uh, public safety needs. So uh, Trustee Brooks is calm and duly noted, sir, and uh, we'll move forward with that. Okay. Any others? Are you? Okay. Okay. Any other concerns, questions, comments? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Williams. False high. Trustee Wilson. False no. Trustee Brooks. Outstanding. Trustee Mack, Trustee Payne, Trustee Farnell, Madam Mayor, that's Ordinance 2018-38. F2C, first, second, and third reading, an ordinance authorizing the execution of a cable television franchise agreement by and between the Village of University Park, Wilco County, Illinois, and Comcast of Illinois, West Virginia, LLC. Um, before we vote this, I'd like to say I'm happy to see this back where our cable station is back online and everyone's been able to view it and this franchise agreement we lost and we have now trying to restore it. Thank you. Roll call. I mean, comments? We need a motion. Roll call. Motion. So moved. Okay. So moved. Moved by Trustee Wilson, second by Trustee Brooks. Comment, concerns? This is the agreement that, uh, they, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Any others? Roll call, please. Trustee Williams. Close eye. Trustee Aye. Aye. Trustee Brooks. Close eye. Trustee Close eye. Trustee Payne. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Aye. Mayor Cutter. Aye. Now maybe we can get our young broadcasters program back. Mm -hmm. Madam Mayor, that's ordinance 0-2018-39. 39. Thank you. F2D, first, second, and third reading, an ordinance authorizing in a collective bargaining agreement by and between the Village of University Park, Willowbrook County, Illinois, and University Park Professional Firefighters Association, LAFF slash AFFI. So moved. Moved by Trustee Brooks, second by Trustee McMullen. Questions, concerns, comments? Just want to say, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Firefighters Chief uh, Chelios, thank you. I read it. And pretty much it was actually, you guys never disappoint. Thank you very much. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say I've never seen anything like it. Um, just for the audience's sake, this was a union negotiation that I'm proud to talk about now. We can legally do that. That they saved money for us. They cut back on their own raises. They eliminated a lot of perks that they got. Um, I don't know, people know that I'm a stickler about the insurance and it's a bit of a thorn for me. And they did listen this time in their negotiations because I do not believe that it should be, we can't afford to give people 100% retirement money for insurance for the rest of 100% that was just really costing us. Right now it's costing us over a million dollars. So I'm happy to hear that they thought and they heard and they listened and they cut that out. So, and they, I think people, I have to, I've been working 40 years, I have to pay into my insurance and I think everybody should. And they're, they negotiated that, they won that, they negotiated a lot of things in Linton, they eliminated raises for themselves, they stretched it out. So they understand that we have to survive and you can't ask me for something, I can't, can't tell me to give you five dollars and three dollars in my hand and they understood that so with that said I am thankful for the negotiations and the things and that we didn't have to go to arbitration 
and all. So I thank you very much for that effort, and I hope the other ones are following suit. Madam Mayor, can I leave right now? Yes, sir. When I heard what they did uh, a couple of weeks ago and all of the work that went, that went into this, this this whole package, I just take my hat off to uh, Chief Chelios and, and his crew. I think we have the smartest firefighters in the South Suburbs because they really worked hard on that. And definitely. All right. Thanks for the cuts. Thank you very much. We appreciate you a lot. Any other comments, concerns? Roll call. Oh. Trustee Bowie, Trustee Wilson. Aye. Trustee Brooks. Roll tie. Trustee McMullen. Trustee Page. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Mayor Kevin. Votes aye. Madam Mayor, that's 2018-40. Thank you so much again. Ooh, that's nice. F2 to E. Motion to approve payment to Atwater Realtor Corporation family dollar in the amount of $56,419.25 pursuit to the redevelopment agreement for the redevelopment project area number five. Which I said, six, 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 six. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Trustee Payton, second. second by Trustee McMullen. Questions, concerns, Questions. comments? Questions? Uh, could you just give me a brief explanation on what this payment is all about and what, um, what part of the TIF agreement uh, this is from? Yes. Uh, this in regards to family dollar and TIF 6 and the redevelopment agreement. We would reimburse them 90% of their taxes that they pay uh, up to a cap uh, for them building in TIF 6. That's a TIF agreement that the board approved uh, some time ago uh, with those specifications. The dollar amount is approximately 90% of the taxes that they paid into the property this year. So it's a yearly payment. Any others? I've printed my, I'm sorry, I printed my own um, copy and I seem to be missing that whole section. I just have the cover sheet. It's not a section, it's just a motion. Oh, it is just a cover sheet? Just a motion. Oh, so can you? And the money is coming out of where I'm sorry, I was looking for my paperwork, the supported documentation. Uh, because I thought in the past we got documentation to show us where where it itemizes where this money is coming from. No, it, we agreed to itemize if we were taking payments to pay village expenses out of the TIF right. that would be itemized to fulfill a TIF agreement that's already approved. Uh, that's not the agreement. The village attorney reviews the agreement, we review the reimbursement request. We look at how much money they were paid to date, and if it does not meet the cap, at that point, we go there. Um, the TIF was initiated in 2012. Uh, they started paying taxes in 2014. From 2014 all the way to present, they've been receiving 90% reimbursable based on the taxes they've been paid. Thank you, dude, for printing all this out, all these communications. Um, yes. Uh, uh, Madam Mayor, come here. Yes, sir. Just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, just for... Uh, uh, just to make it speed it up, this about the next item. Is this same kind of deal for the next item? That's correct. Okay. That, that company being tip five. We're making tip payments. <laughs> this is a common. Uh, the board has been taking action to pay tips for the last year and a half. This is a common action that the board has been doing in regards to um, pay, making tip payments. The board. Uh, the village has been historically not making tip payments on time. Typically, we would get close to litigation, uh, wait two or and a half to three years to make payments, and end up having back payments. This is the first time in a long time that we're actually making payments on time. Um, and like I said, this is reviewed by the village attorney. It's reviewed by myself. The village attorney signs off on it. He reviews all redevelopment agreements. We verify that the company paid their taxes, it was inputted to the tax system, and from there we uh, look at and see if the deposit came into TIF 6, which it did, and we reimburse them 90%, which is what we're doing. So this, um, for 2E, the TIF agreement was done in 2012, they started paying taxes in 2014. So this was agreed upon. Is there, since we know what's coming up, in, I 
I think this came before. Is there any way the board can see if we're doing this? I don't know. Once is this once a year payment? Once a, how often is this? And how much is it? What is it for? I um, and in the, historically the board has voted to pay whatever, and the board sometimes historically didn't know what the money was. Turn wise, please. Uh, Trustee Wilson, this will be an annual uh, request as long as family dollar. That's what you're as long as they make the request uh, under their redevelopment agreement, they're entitled to 90% of the increment difference in values. 90% for the amount of money paid as taxes for their property. It looks like for tax year 2017, they paid $62,688.06. Uh, there's verification that they actually paid their taxes. This person. That's what they paid prior to they <coughs> certified how much they had to redevelop the costs, which came to $416,000 approximately total when they redeveloped the property. So under their agreement, they can be reimbursed 90% of the taxes paid in one year up to that $416,000. This would be an annual reimbursement if they make the request, they have to make the request that's triggered. If they pay their taxes, they send the request. Then the request gets reviewed. Um, and they did actually do a certification of the redevelopment cost previously, and that's where the 460000 But it would be 90% each year, as long as they have not paid that cap. And as long as they've actually paid their taxes and the treasurer has turned those monies over to village it's not the village general fund this isn't the village's mm -hmm. separate special tax allocation fund for them. so if if the board since we're voting on it wanted to see some of that documentation how would we go about doing that because and, and i'm just concerned because of historically what has happened in the village i know it might have been the village manager and the attorneys but historically we've had you know it question yeah, and, and there was no documentation, and I, I mean, I understand you two both have reviewed it, and you two have both, both agreed on it, but the board is voting on the money, and the board hasn't seen anything. And realistically, uh, just, just so it's common knowledge, uh, the, the placing the motion on the agenda is a form of transparency for the board. Because there's a redevelopment agreement, this does not even have to come for the, before the board for approval because there's an approved redevelopment agreement already in place authorizing those payments. Because of the issues with the TIF, that's why we have the transparency. Furthermore, Family Dollar has came up for vote this year um, and this the same board approved their previous payment as well. So this is not a new concept um, coming before the board. I will talk to Attorney Welsh. I have a meeting with him on Thursday. And if a, a specific doc documentation is required by the board, then we'll go ahead and do that. This is the first time of myself hearing of this request. Other than us taking money out the tip to reimburse ourselves for expenses that we took as a village. There was never a request put in place in regards to documentation related to following a redevelopment agreement. But we will uh, look into that and kind of satisfy that. Or, may I? If if the board doesn't need to vote on it, then maybe we shouldn't just vote. We shouldn't vote on it. It could just put be put in here for information purposes only to be transparent. But if we don't need to vote on it because of a development agreement, then why are we voting on it? Because the board requested it specifically. I was the board's prerogative to see this on the agenda. But the board majority or consensus state that they don't want this on the agenda anymore. And just for us to make the legal lives payments, then we can do that. But this was a request by the majority of the board to have transparency so they'll know that the TIP payments are made so they know there's no future litigation coming in, i.e. all the litigation we had in 2017 related to the lack of payment for the TIP. So everything but, that comes before the board has to be voted on it? We can't be just given information for information purposes only and transparency? Again, it's the board's request I understand. that this be placed on the agenda as a votable item through a motion. Yeah, I understand that. But my question was for future references. Are there items, if something else comes up like this, that can just be given to the board 
prior to the payment so it's public knowledge and the board is aware. Madam Mayor, that'll be Madam Mayor's decision if she would make that direction. Okay, that, maybe that's a question. Happen. Does everything that comes for information purposes have to be voted voted on by the board, or can we be given some information <coughs> at a board meeting that's just information purposes only? Right. As I, I, if, if, so are we debating transparency? No, 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 no. No, I think that's what she's saying. Um, I think I'll let you speak then. Yeah. One possible way to handle this would be to. Um, since the money is going to be transferred out of the TIF fund to the entity requesting the reimbursement, what could be done is it would be put into the bills paid or payable section you know, with the TIF item and the bills paid and payable showing that these uh, reimbursements being made out of the TIF as part of that. That would be one. That would be one option. And if we do it for that TIF transaction, that would be all TIF transactions, including the reimbursable items that the village spent that were TIF reimbursable, and which trustee Wilson requested a itemized list of those expenses. So that would be going backwards from what the board's original direction was, Trust. Um, but regardless of what she's saying, oh, go ahead, Trustee Payton and then Trustee. Yeah, I, I guess I don't see why we're spending so much time on a simple motion. You know, we can work this other stuff out later, but this is a simple item. We're just acknowledging the fact that we're making a payment. There's a, several of them in the board packet. We already said this is what we want to do. We just need to just go ahead and do it and, and work the rest out later rather than continue to debate this. Okay, but yeah, just to resolve, I think what Trustee uh, Wilson is saying that it's already agreed to be paid upon. And, and now it seems like we're voting to pay it and it's already a done deal anyway, that's what she's saying. No, that's what she's trying to understand, why we voted to pay it and it's already been approved to pay it. That's what she's saying, but I think that's, am I clear on what you, okay. So, but it's something, even if it's in bills payable, we have to vote for it. We have to vote on bills payable as well. So this way it's just an item that's showing, like you said, everyone has been yelling about tips and you heard the people that handled it, not me, um, the due to tip payments. So that's, we, we're trying to explain it to the people who are let them see how the tips are actually being paid now. And it's no one hidden or it's moving money here or there. So with that said, any other comments, concerns? Roll call. Trustee Williams. Close high. Trustee Wilson. Close no. Trustee Brooks. Close high. Trustee Manuel, Rosai. Trustee Payton. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Come here, Kevin. Rosai. Um, F2. F, motion to approve payment of Avatar Corporation in the amount of 1,445,000, I'm sorry, $145,341.83 pursuit to its redevelopment agreement and redevelopment project Area number five, is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Trustee Brooks, second? Second. By Trustee McMullen. Questions, concerns, comments? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Williams, close aye. Trustee Wilson. Close no. Trustee Brooks. Close aye. Trustee McMullen. Close aye. Trustee Page. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Mayor Cutter. Close aye. F2G, Appointments to Economic Development Committee, Public Services, and Utility Committee. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Trustee Wilson, second. Appointed. Yes, second. I'm trying to find my list here. Where's my Who's the second? Oh, okay, here they are. Um, second? With the second? Brown. Second. Brown. And Trustee. Um, with the concurrence of the board, I will make the following appointments, Economic Development, Deborah Orr, Ashley Nicole Austin, which we have done before, and um, Antonio Toll Towns, which we have done before. Terms will expire December 31st, 20... Yeah, maybe year. Maybe year? Because this is new for the year. Yeah, these were the first appointees. Yes. So, we're going to make those three, three years. years. So, we'll make that 2021. 2021? Okay. 
and these individuals were appointed on May 22nd prior to the passage of the ordinance established to the committee. Public Service and Utilities, Mr. Milton Lynch, terms to expire December 31st, 2020. Is there a motion? We have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Amend, Mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to amend yes, sir. this to reflect the 2020, 2020 date. Yes. Right. Is there a second? To second. Me? Second by Trustee Mount Dyer Brooks. Roll call, please. And thank you for the volunteers. There's more than enough. Both sides. Trustee Wilson. Aye. Trustee Brooks. Both sides. Trustee Beckham. Both sides. Trustee Payne. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Mary Johnson. Aye. Thank you. That was unmitted. Now, please. After the meeting, I can. We are. In the session. Okay, I didn't know if I needed to ask no. a reference to that appoint those appointments. Pardon me? It, my question was a reference to the appointments for those two committees. Yes. I didn't know if appointments are still available, open. Yes, it is. To volunteer. Uh, it is for, um, I think, I don't know. Uh, I would get back with you after the board okay. meeting. I'm not sure. Thank I can you. let him say thank Sorry you. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no worries. Okay. No. Where's that? Um, Madam Mayor, no, I just need to do the roll call. Roll call, please. Trustee Williams. Trustee Wilson. Aye. Trustee Wilson. Aye. Trustee Wood. Aye. Trustee Wood. Aye. Trustee Payton. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Aye. And thank you very much for those volunteers. I'm really happy uh, that Ms. Deborah Orr has stepped up to be the chairperson on that Community Economic Development. I don't know if you know her history, thank God she's retired from the EPA and she was the cause of um, Brownsville in, in Chicago. She's really, she's really a great person in our village to do that. And South Spur Mayor Manager is uh, really, really honor her and I'm glad that she's a resident of University Park. We're glad, we're glad to have her. Okay, next F. I'm sorry, F. Uh, F2H, bills payable. Their motion. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me give it to you first. Get that over here. I'm on a time schedule, everybody. It got me on a clock tonight. <laughs> it's a bit. We got to get out of here a certain time. Attached for your approval is a listing of general operating expenses for the Village of University Park that occurred on October 23rd, 2018 through November 27, 2018. General funds one hundred eighty nine thousand eight hundred sixty dollars and fifty six cents. Road and bridge fund one thousand four hundred and fifty six dollars and ninety three cent. Town center fund seven thousand six hundred fifty seven dollars. Capital project funds thirty six thousand nine hundred and six dollars. Payroll funds five thousand six hundred forty seven dollars and eighty four cents. Totaling two hundred and forty one dollars five hundred twenty eight dollars and thirty three cents. Is there a motion? So moved. moved by Trustee Brooks second. and second by Trustee McMullins. Questions, concerns, comments? Comments. Comment. Trustee Brooks? Yeah. Manager Pate, I'm looking at bills payable here. And I apologize because I did not reply to your email. But I too have this question of this 9500 Is this included in the bills payable or is this just something that this, that's a discussion? Or is it something you wanted to put in here? I'm sorry, um, check number. Check number once, well at least the check that I'm looking at here is 102927. And it's, and it's at the bottom of bills payable if you had it all printed out, if it was all printed out. Uh, one zero two nine two seven and it's to the police executive research and this training is for july 14th to the first 2019 next year so I, I, is this in bills payable so i can answer that question Come on. the board tabled this item okay right. to be placed back on bills payable and, and, and it is included in the total amount in the front page. And I believe it, I saw a note in regard, it's on the cover sheet, correct? Or, yes, I believe I saw a note in regards to uh, the amounts clarifying that. Oh, it does say Yes. The two checks in the back are not included on the check register due to their print date. 
they are included in the total. This total here? That's correct. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I have one, two, three pages, and I don't see a check on 1029. It, because the, the check was on the last bills payable. It was tabled. The yeah. check cannot be voided until a certain amount of time goes by. So it was included back on this list because somebody on the board requested clarification and questioning in regards to this. So the board can vote their conscience in regards to it and we can move forward. Uh, if the board wants to exclude it, it's totally understandable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I need to uh, Manager Pay, just just to go into it, I'm not going to go into the email. I want you to put it for the record. This is not until next year. We do understand that, correct? That's correct. Why should we pay for this now? So I provided the documentation in regards to the invoice and when the payment has to be made. So that was clarification. You may not be here this time next year. Okay. I'm just being honest. And the contract, and I'm not saying that we're fired. We're going to get rid of. I'm just saying we have to make these conscious efforts. If a situation or election or anything don't go the right way, how does that look if this board is not the same and you're not here, but yet we just paid for you to be at the training? Do you see my point? I'm, I'm not. Saying, I'm and not and trying and to ridicule you. Wait, wait, wait. Let her finish. finish. I, I, I have, have the floor. I have the floor. I'm not trying to ridicule you or anything like that. I'm just saying that in something like this, if the dynamics of the board had changed and say you're not here, but it's already paid, that looks bad to this, this, these set of board of trustees as if they allowed manager Pate to go to the police executive research form next year at the end of the summer. And I'll be honest, I, I'm going to be here to 2021. That's something that I may have to answer in 2021. So do you see my point on that? So just to answer the process, you apply for the course once a year. They make admissions one year in advance. You have 45 days from the admission to pay for the course. They remove you from the list and they add, they add anybody that's on the waiting list to the course. I did not make the decision on when the payment should be made. I followed the instructions on the invoice. Again, I understand that there are uh, things, statements being made and threats being made to board members in regards to if this gets paid, paid no, 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 and no, them no. not being reelected. And I understand that. Okay. And I, it is the board's prerogative if they want to remove it. I'm totally fine. I had a long conversation with the mayor in regards to the subject. I'm not debating the issue. If it's the board's prerogative to pull it off, deny it. I have no problem voiding the check. I have no problem. Uh, removing myself from attendance. Um, it's very rare to get a, a attendance to this course because you have to formally apply for it. And again, even if this was last year or next year, 2019, it would be around the same time. So this is where I'm at with the subject. Um, again, I ask the board if they choose not to do that, that is the board's prerogative and I will move forward uh, appropriately. Okay, it's just, you know, Manager Pate, once again, this is just my opinion as, as a police officer in the training. If this comes up next year and you hear and, and we hear the dynamics of the board is still here, well, at least we know one person is retired from the board. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I, we don't have a problem sending our, do you, do you understand? I, I just think that the timing of this would be it's just, well, it's not good. But we do understand and we're saying, and I am saying, I'm not saying we, I'm gonna tell you what my mind speak, as grandma said. I personally feel that I have no problem with you having training. I just think this is the wrong time because if I vote yes for this and that you're not here no more, that's $9,000 and some training wherever you, if you're not here, that you get for free. That just understand my point, and I want the public to understand that point. Uh, uh, but, uh, and then, um, just, just for the record, yes, you did have a conversation with me, and I did say that it was a little bit much right now for us in our budget, and we are looking at snow and other issues as a priority. So you said you understood it if I could not do that. So 
Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, the timing that you mentioned with the application process, the timing is now. You did. It will be the same time this year, next year, any year. This is not something that is trying. With the perception is, is that this is being put in because the election is coming up next year, and I'm trying to get training from early. This will be the same time regardless of this year, next year, any other year. There's no ill will or ill attention attached to this. Uh, this went before bills paid was well, it suppo supposed to. I understand the viewpoint of how this may look uh, based on various factors um, as the village manager, as the director of public safety. Again, I had thorough conversations with the mayor as the board's prerogative to deny the payment. Then I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, uh, uh, just, so, uh, just so I can get my opinion on the matter of regards to uh, changing the village manager quickly after election, I'm just going to give advice, especially to those who will definitely be here in 2021, it would be a mistake to do a quick turnaround on any of the staff, but most in particularly the village manager who has been dealing with the issues that we have. So I highly recommend no matter what happens, for the people who are here, <laughs> don't do it. It may shot to go well past August, maybe September at the earliest. Uh, so, so. Madam Mayor, may I please be recognized? Just a second. Yeah. Well, let him finish. Mayor, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yes. This, no it, it's really an honor to be chosen to attend this, this training. Is that correct, man? That's correct. Yeah, I thought so. And, you know, uh, is it, is there a possibility that if, for whatever reason, you're not uh, with the village or can't attend for any other reason that uh, they could be refunded? Because this also includes room and board and so forth, so that wouldn't... Yes, and, 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 uh, and there, is a, if a, there is a stipulation that there is a change in circumstance. The uh, village can get refunded money short of $250. So they can receive the full funds back short $250. If it is the board, if it's anybody's decision uh, for me not to attend the training. Right, right. So that, you know, that, that kind of, in my opinion, would belie uh, the, the, the fear that some may have that you would be taking advantage of us uh, somehow and, and that we would receive the benefits of the village board. Because, I, I, you know, this is, this is quite a program. It's quite an honor to be even selected for something like this. And, um, uh, the board also signs up for training early. I know I, I uh, uh, signed up to go to the uh, uh, International Shopping Center convention one year and had an accident. A deer ran in front of my car on the way to the airport, and I wasn't able uh, to attend. So you know we 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 had paid for it in advance, so this can happen at any time. So I think you know the benefits. And there's no good time for anything, but I think the benefits of the long term, the recognition that you will get, the things that you will learn, will benefit our community for the long term. And I, and I think, in, just in my opinion, you know, it'll pay for itself in the long term. So, you know, I, I would vote to support. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Oh, there's honestly, honestly, being the biggest issue I have with the dialogue is it seems as if a projection has been made that I may not be employed after the next election because that's what's being basically being stated. The reason, if you're not here, what if you're here or not? So, it, you know, to make statements like that, you know, really, you know, beyond other objections, you know, as an employee of the village, you know, it just does not feel right, you know, because that's what's being said. Did, did you have to apply for this? Yes. Okay. Um, and is what is it for? What is it says police executive research research form? What will be happening at this form? What kind of? So it's a, it's a three week fellowship where chiefs come in from across the nation, small from small, large, and um, large metropolitan departments, and they work on research studies in regards to doing global related research in reference to police policing in the community. Um, so 
is being taught by Boston University, one of the top universities in the country, again, it's an application process. Um, and so basically, that's, that's what the what is for trustee. And so my only concern would be that because it's for police chiefs and you are our village manager, I would prefer you to go to village manager training. And I think I said that a year ago about, oh, let me finish, about training. Um, village manager um, expertise or training or whatever, I would think that if we're sending somebody for police training of any sort or chief training, we would send the acting chief. So We don't have an acting chief in the police department. Then the next person in line, which is... He's the director of public safety. Yeah, he's the police. Yeah, it's, it's, he's the police. So you're the police chief and the village manager? I'm the you're village manager and director of public safety. Right, right. But I remember when we had discussion about that. Okay, so I don't think a village manager should be gone for three weeks to do police training. So if I'm able to get accepted to a four-week class in Harvard, would the board accept that if I was able to get accepted next month? Honest, honestly, I think the village needs a village manager for three weeks. Okay. That's, that's just my perception. First time I ever heard that input. May I be recognized? Let me make let me let me correct uh, Manager Pate on something. Manager Pate, you are an employee, but you also on a contract. Is that correct? That's correct. So your contract ends when? May first. Okay. So once again, I don't have control. I voted for you to be the village manager. Let's get that correct. I didn't agree with how the public safety was changed and whipped around to accommodate the situation. But I want you to understand my position before you say anything else and say the dialogue, because you don't know the dialogue of seven individuals up here. Your job is just to run this village, and that's it. No one is trying to tell you that you're not going to be here. What I am telling you is that I'm here to 2021. And what I am saying is that any possible situation come around, I understand Trustee Payton, he's correct. That probably is a great training for you. But 9,500 right now, in my position, I'm gonna vote to what I believe is best for the village. And that's the point I'm gonna stand. For Trustee Oscar Brown, let me say something to you. When we ran on change, we ran on change. We're not up here calling the mayor out her name. We're not running around here with half butt equipment. This village has come a long way. The artist is coming back. We didn't have this before. So to say that I would make a knee jerk, and I'm gonna say me, a knee jerk reaction and fire or get rid of the village manager, that's absurd. I know what he can do. And he has done a hell of a lot. I'm just talking about check 102927. Uh, I'm not talking about his job. I'm not talking about anything else. I'm just speaking about a circumstance that I want, that I'm presenting and saying, hey, we have this 9,500 here. That we do need things done. We need another, another if I see the email correct, we need another snowplow. I mean, these are things that need to be judged correctly before, once again, someone's going to say this board don't know what the hell they're doing, and that's not true. We have made some damn good decisions, and I've been in office 567 days. Some people are going to agree what I do, and some don't. Some people felt he shouldn't be the village manager, but I voted for him because I have had my moments where manager paid may get on my nerves. But I tell you what, at the end of the day, he calls me on the phone and say, trustee, let's work this out. I didn't get that damn response from everybody else. I don't mean to seem like that because I done been through something for the past month. So as far as that's concerned, no, he's not, there is no knee-jerk reaction to get rid of no cheap paint. He will be right where he's at, and the village will move forward. And may I yield my time because I got a little emotion on that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, no, you know, we're going to just, I'll tell you what, why don't we just do this rather than debate? Why don't we just pull this chair? I am just a point of order. I will. One order. I was just saying, why don't we pull this rather than hold the whole time up tonight and go? But I am going to respect your wish to speak. But I'm saying, rather than go back and forth, this is a debating thing. We just pull the check because it's and vote on that being removed. Um, so go ahead, Trustee Oscar Brown. All right, uh, 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 through the chair. Uh, I just pointed out what uh, the trustee Brooks said, not anything in particular about any action he may or may not take. I addressed directly something that trustee Brooks came from his mouth. I didn't make anything up. I just addressed it directly and gave my honest advice based on prior experience. Uh, the loss on this would only be $250 because I believe as a the manager has pointed out, and Director of Public Safety, which uh, I have to say I disagree with that title too because I believe that the village manager is over the police department and the fire department, so Director of Public Safety to me seemed duplicative. However, whether you call him the village manager, Director of Public Safety, or the uh, village manager that is over the fire department and the police department, he is the chief law enforcement officer for the village and University Park, which also makes this a good idea. So uh, that's what I have to say about that, and that's why I believe, and the, uh, I'm not totally 100% familiar, but and I've had discussions with him about it, it is an honor for him to go. And it would be a bad idea to do that, or to do anything to change anything too quickly, regardless of who wins, who loses, who votes for who. So, uh, I believe that uh, congratulations on this honor. We shouldn't hold it up another, uh, what it be, about six weeks. So that would be past the time for him to get this payment in, for him to participate in that. And if necessary, we could then pull the money back if we all of a sudden have a change of heart. He got this honor, let's get him to have this honor, and let's let him go, and hopefully we will make good decisions and remember somebody who was trained at a prestigious institution maybe you just want to keep him around even if not as village manager at least as the police chief something that also has a contract madam mayor yes sir make a motion to separate check 102927 uh to be voted separate from bills payable there are second second um, do I have to do a roll call? Trustee Wilson. Okay. I'm sorry. Trustee, I said Trustee Wilson. You did say Trustee Wilson. Wilson. Trustee Wilson. Okay. Trustee Wilson. Oh, yes, to remove the check. And consider it separate. And yes. consider it separate from Bill's parents. Trustee Brooks. Vote tie. Trustee Mike Muller. Vote no. Trustee Payton. Nay. Trustee Brown. Nay. Trustee Brown. Nay. Mayor Covington. Aye. Motion failed. Just when we asked him to sign the vote. The abstention. Abstention goes with the majority. There is no majority. And so the motion to separate failed. So do we have a second on the bills payable? Yes, we do. So to roll call on bills payable. Trustee Williams. Roll call. Trustee Wilson. Both now. Oh, wait, wait. What? I'm sorry. Check is included. Yeah, we didn't finish the questions. We were talking about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Both now. Yeah, it's one of the checks that we need to be addressed. Um, both on the floor, so we can. No, you can't ask questions. Okay. Okay. Continue. What you going to know? Trustee Brooks. Votes no. Trustee McMullen. Votes out of pay bills. 
Like Trustee McClellan, I vote aye to pay the bills. Trustee Brown. Aye. Mayor Cutting. Ball. No. Motion to pay the bills approved. Okay. Um, reports. Time for reports. Anyone have a report? I know Gary has a great report. Good evening, Mayor, Board of Trustees, and residents of University Park. Um, just a quick uh, report from the public works side of it. Um, Mayor and Trustees, I would like to announce that we just received a $38,000 grant to redo all of the lighting in Townsend. Um, $38,000 in our bill is $84.94. As of yesterday, all of the lights are in. Getting them up is next. So we have all new LED lights for this whole town center. So we have changed Village Hall, Police Station, and now Town Center within the past year. Fantastic. Also, I just want to let everyone know that starting on Monday, our donate a tree for the holiday will be in effect again through our public works department. If you would like to donate a tree, we put up trees out front here. Uh, and you can call the public works department 708-534-4823 and the donation is $65 per tree. Okay. And they will be out front by the memorial. Now, is that a real tree? Or yes, they are. They are live trees. Okay, I'll donate one. Thank you. Madam Mayor, copy of Yes, sir. Uh, 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 do you still have my information from uh, last year? Yes, I do. I'll, I'll, donate, I'll donate one, too. Thank and you. also, since I happen to have four kudos, I think you did an excellent job. I happen to go out the, the day of the snowstorm, and I'm going to tell you, you were much better than Madison. Yes. I think of the parts of Richmond Park, too. Yes. Thank you. And yeah. something happened in Olympia Fields, too, that I'm proud that we didn't have a water burst. I think Trustee Wilson called me on the way to work and was saying all the water on Joe Road. So I thank God for the small favors that we got in getting into it. Yes, sir. Uh, I like to do my report. Um, oh, yeah, actually, I have one other question. Uh, just a little, little off the topic. The, uh, the uh, board order, do you know, do you have an uh, anticipated time about when this board order will be uh, done with Aqua? Unfortunately, we don't have the water through the village of University Park. I do not know. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> Yes, question, another question for you. Uh, Director Richardson, I just want to make sure that my numbers are right. Uh, we have two five-ton trucks or three five-ton trucks. I want to get these trucks correct. No, I've been out the loop for a minute, but I want to make sure uh, when you send those emails in a way in my brain is going off of level one, two, and three and where the trucks are because you kind of gave me that crash course on it. Uh, what, what are we looking like? Because I'm going to give you what Trustee Brooks remember last year. We had eight vehicles out on the road doing our heaviest snowstorm last year. I know two were the five-ton trucks that definitely we had to tend to I-57 and then take care of our main road um, through town and then we had the smaller trucks pretty much trying to get Blackhawk and so forth so if you can run these numbers or the trucks so the residents will know what are we operating this year on and salt salt uh, how much we get uh, right now we're operating on six plows with salters so we have uh, three we have four five-ton trucks. We have a 98, we have a 2000. 
the 98 has not moved in two years. The 2000 is on fumes. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Um, and then we have three one-ton trucks. And we have one pickup that is just a plow. What, whatever happened to the, and this was more towards the summer or something, I come up to Village Hall, what hap whatever happened to that, that, that truck I got, the 31,000 or something, that nice sweet truck that was out in Willing, Willow Brook or whatever, why we didn't get that one? Whatever happened to that one? Did we? We lost, we lost that one. Because, because. Uh, it's no longer there. Manager Pate, can we from now on, when something like that come up, can you, I'm sure the board is going to say, okay, can we put that on the agenda or if it's not, let the mayor if, if know? If it's not properly budgeted, then no, if it's not budgeted, we cannot put place something on the agenda. Okay, let me ask you this, let, since you want to go there. How many trucks do we need Manager Pate to run I-57 at level one? I'm asking you a question. I'm yielding my time to ask you. We're asking you. How many trucks, how many, how many five-ton trucks, the same truck that was 31,000 that would, would, would have benefit this village, how many of them does it take to really run this village? Four to five. To keep up with it? Four, four to five? Four to five. Okay. How many did he just say that we had? Run. Run. He just told you 98 so, is sitting here. How, many, how long are we going to sit here with trucks? sitting in the yard looking like garbage. So, to clarify your question, uh, the 98 was the only truck not running. Director Richardson made notification in the early morning of the storm that the other two trucks are out and the level of damage on those trucks are not rep reprehensible or expensive repair. So it, was initially, but? But, so, it was initially the trucks were on the road. As far as the request as far as purchasing trucks, I have to prioritize requests. Uh, the board requested more police cars. Actually, trustee, you corrected, requested more police cars. Uh, for one plow truck, we need police cars on the road. We have to prioritize. But we discussed them. lease and stop. We, you said that once, let me tell you, I know what I said. You made it very clear that we have one more audit to go and we can start leasing vehicles for those squad cars. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. That does not, in the budget, will not affect what would cost to the purchase of the truck. Then leasing, would it not be cheaper? We're not at the point of leasing, trustee. You just told me we have one more audit to go. So Am I correct? A, we have the 2015 audit that's going to be approved tomorrow. You have a 2016 audit that's in progress right now. You have a 2017 audit that will be approved in January. Okay. And so I, we've been in conversation with Ford. The village failed to fulfill its obligation in making on-time payments. Correct. And so they see on-time financials at the time they do the lease. So yes, you are correct, trustee. Once those audits are completed, which is being done by the auditor, yes, we will be able to lease. Trust us. But when we have two or three police vehicles broken down, and you have officers almost sharing vehicles, we had to do that emergency purchase, which you were aware of, that the board approved. How many cars they got? Because that's on my notes too. I come back into town, I don't even know what squad cars we have. We got a, a so you have two? Ford Explorer running around with no decals. The rest of the cars are running around with blackout decals. As a matter of fact, did we even send any officers, uh, uh, Officer uh, Samuel, uh, Humendez uh, funeral. Do we even have squad cars to send down there? No. See, this is not what we well, took. Did, this uh, is you and I would talk later. Okay, that'd be great. I have a question. Yeah, it's a question. It's a question. So we need four to five, four to five, five-ton trucks to manage the village. Is that is that correct? We need, averagely, three trucks in the industrial area. Right now, we only have one. Um, so you said we have four total trucks? Four total five-ton trucks? We have three that are running. Three that run? Yes. And how many five-ton trucks does it man take to manage 
the village. The so village? When I say the village, I'm talking about the industrial park and the streets the residents drive down. Overall, honestly, trustee, they should all be five ton trucks. So how much, approximately, do you know uh, how much a one ton truck will cost? A one ton truck? Mm -hmm. That's the smaller trucks. Mm -hmm. They're around 70, 80, outfitted. Wow. That's new. A five ton truck, fully outfitted, it's close to 200,000. And we need five to manage the village. And we only have three. We only have three. Right. Okay. We only have three. I just running. want everybody to understand yes. we have three running five ton trucks, and we need five to manage the village. Yes. So we'll have some problems. Do we have enough stuff? Okay. Do we have enough salt to last for the winter? Right now we're good on salt. We don't have the capacity to store the salt. So we store it at 300 tons at a time. Like last year we ran out though and then it was costly, more costly, right? Yes. So we've got three trucks running. We, we, hit, we own a total of Four or five? Five ton trucks. We own, five, we own four uh -huh. five ton trucks. Okay. We have three one ton trucks and we have one 250. Okay, the one, one, uh, the one five ton truck that's not running. Yes. What's the problem with it? It has not ran since I've been here. Is that the 98? Yes, it is. Okay. What, what would it take to, to uh, get that truck running? We can't even get it out of the shop without breaking it down to get out. The engine has been pretty much dismantled, trying to get it up. Uh, the wheels have locked on it. It's been sitting in the same spot since I've been here. The bed of the truck from over the years, that was the village's original first five ton truck. The bed is whole. We can't even put salt or anything in the bed. So I think that's one of the reasons the truck was put on the side. Okay. Why, why haven't we just been going ahead and scrap it? it uh, in 2016, I gave you guys a book of scrap, and that was one of the trucks in the book. Those trucks are still in my yard. There are at least six vehicles in my yard that should have been scrapped a long time ago um, through the changing of the guards, as I said. Everything has been pushed to the side. Well, I, I know we scrapped other things, and that's why I was wondering why, why wasn't that maybe included in the other items that were scrapped. I never received authorization to scrap anything. The book that I did up, in between the changing, things have just been pushed to the side on the scrap. Okay. So the effective number of car, uh, trucks that we have that can push a plow is what, six? Right now? Yeah. Six. Five, six? Six. Okay. One of them is just a pickup, okay. a 250, right. which does cul-de-sacs but we do not salt because it does not have a salter. So when we do the cul-de-sacs in the parking lot, we have to come back with another truck to salt. So that truck is taken away from somewhere else. The industrial area, honestly, is the biggest part of University Park. And one truck tries to handle that. One truck can't handle that. So from the email that I saw, uh, you and the, the manager will put together maybe a, a capital uh, equipment plan that would include the, the trucks and then maybe when we're looking at a bond or whatever we're looking at for next year, we can maybe include that, that part of it. And if we scrap them, um, Director, what would that bring to us if we did put it scrap right now? To be honest, man, the 98, we would probably pay more in trying to get it towed out of the shop. <laughs> to go to, to be honest, we would probably only get for metal. 
That's about it. Okay. 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 Yes, Trustee Williams. Gary, uh, I'd like to know, how, how much would it be and would it be advantageous for us to rent these trucks? Lease you, well, we can't rent plows. They don't rent plows for the insurance factors. And when it comes down to leasing, you're only going to lease new. So that's something totally, totally different. Everything we bought down there has been used. Well, if we lease a new one, it would, would that be cheaper? Uh, it's always better. But for but some things, you can't. It wouldn't help us now, to be honest. By the time the truck is outfitted and made, it'll be the summertime. Until we get our audits done, we can't even do that. Yeah. Because we have to be in good standing with, when he said that. Sorry. Um, after, yes, sir. Considering the, um, the, the rough patch that we're going through right now with equipment, I think on the first day of, um, of the season, you guys really handled yourselves quite well. You and your whole staff uh, removed the snow appropriately. We were able to drive out early, early in the morning. And I appreciate you and your staff for all the things that you did with the underachieving equipment, but you overachieved. So thank you for that, and I appreciate that. And we just got to work on that equipment right now. Just let us know. You did an excellent job, Director Richardson. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, and on your report as well, I told you guys I did call and thank you so much. The phone didn't blow up <laughs> this time when the snow hit. I'm like, oh God, but it was really nice. So I'm grateful for what you're doing and what you have. And we're gonna try and make it so. And I thank you for that grant because that was very much needed. It's so dark in this town center and to get a grant. And that's one thing I ask all the directors always to do, see if they can find fundings and some type of grants to help us. So um, kudos to you and your staff. You guys are doing a wonderful job. And we're gonna have to work on that. And I'll help you on that too as well, as far as seeing with the trust. But there are other resources that I can try to reach out to. Okay? Other reports? Oh, yeah. Um, and to the audience, since no one's here from the police department, well, for you guys, um, there was a lot of talk about our water situation. I noticed people are uh, next door in here, so informative now, but it is election time. So, um, to let you know, we do not have any control or aqua for the 50th, 50,000th time. And my husband did last night when the water was trickling. And Gary said his wife was like, uh, we have no water. So all of us that were here in the village did notice the water start trickling. And my husband did make a phone call to Aqua and then they said possibly tomorrow morning and then and they need to do better. And I did make a phone call and say that I would appreciate it if they could do better as far as alerting the village residents. So as soon as we get something, thank you, uh, Mr. Richardson for doing that and Chelios for your messages on that alert for the water to boil your water first and also that it would be up and when it is mine is still acting crazy everything is crazy now um, from the com ed to the water to the flights to everything so i got alerts from infinity com ed <laughs> water company so i thank you for giving us what you did do but we cannot give you any more alerts any earlier than what we received from the companies so it's not anything on the village as far as alerting anyone, as soon as we get the information, we will push it out to you in all medias that we can. I know um, that Ms. Jenkins had sent it out on our Facebook page as soon as she got it, and she's got, I don't know how many hits immediately. She gets 200 to sometimes 700 hits on our on Facebook for University it's like, Park. It's up to 819 at 4 o'clock. I mean, it was up to 819 at 4 o'clock. Okay, so thank you for that. So all the source of medias that we do have, we will alert you as soon as we can. And I would really love to know where our robo machine disappeared to, because at one time we did have a robo machine and it just disappeared. <laughs>
Okay. Put that on the list too. <laughs> Any other reports? Uh, reports from our um, trustees? Reports? Oh, um, I'm going to go. Yes, yes ma'am. I just want to tell Gary Richardson. You, the mic's up. Mine's my, my dead to talk. Talk, talk loud. Oh, okay. <laughs> you did a fantastic job. Yes. You know, all of that snow and ice, it was really crazy to even look at. But when I stepped outside to go do what I had to do, it was clear. So you're on your job. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Trustee Wilson. Uh, um, Director Garrett uh, Richardson, thank you for the uh, email alert about the water. Because my husband and I had blow dryers about to go tackle we, what we thought was frozen pipe. Yeah. So, um, I appreciated that at, at that very moment that you sent it out. Um, I, I just like to say, I don't usually miss board meetings, so I apologize for missing the last committee of the whole. I went to see Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey. So um, it was very inspirational and empowering, and, and I just had a great time. So I apologize for missing the board meeting. I will also, I will miss the committee of, um, it won't be a committee of the whole. Though. The, the, one, the December meeting, I'll be out of town for my job. And so when I last saw you guys, we were at around Halloween time. So I'd like to say thank you for everybody who made donations to the Human Services Special Events Committee for um, the Thanksgiving handout. Um, Human Services Special Events had several cars. I think it might have been five, four or five in a motorcycle. We had a fire pit, we did marshmallows, and I think the kids really had a good time. So thank you for everybody who, who supported. Um, Trustee Payton, your handout looked like it was my handout because I was passing out your treat, so <laughs> <laughs> along yeah. with my treat, so I looked like I was doing things. So thank you. So when everybody know Trustee um, Payton also made a donation. Um, so, um, <coughs>
she was from the west side of Chicago when they migrated to the north. The problem, the problem, reason why I take it so hard, for those who know I work for the Bulls and the White Sox, I could not have done it without her. She raised me. And for the first time, it hurts even talking about it, even when Ms. Keisha came over and the mayor. It hurts to go after 46 years when you go a certain place where you know it's home and you have to stay in a hotel. Uh, that was probably the painful part for me and my wife. I'd like to thank my wife, Karen, because the whole time, uh, my grandmother's thing was, don't cry. She lived her life, but she also had her ways. Um, even tonight, she was a, uh, I sent a message to the board, she was a blue dog Democrat, for those who don't know. That's a Democrat, evil. If the term came from back in the, uh, back under LBJ, and she would vote for a Democrat, she'll tell you, vote for a Democrat no matter what, and if he's a Democrat, you better make him do what you ask of him. And in the South, the blue dog Democrat believes in gun rights, but they also have the rights about life, they believe in uh, being fiscally uh, responsible, and there's very few blue dogs, Democrats, left in uh, Congress, but there's an election in Mississippi right now, and I'm going to tell you, that lady who is racist, if she was alive right now, she'll be on that road telling everybody, don't y'all be so stupid. Go to the polls. And if you actually do know, I, I, I do have a, don't tell me if, he, if he, that gentleman won or not, and, and did not elect that racist lady. But it's just the fact that that whole part, is, Mississippi is turning blue. It's because we have all values, and she was the type of person that teach that our values be pretty much the same. We just look different. So it was kind of hard for me to really go down there, and then my mother pushed me right up to, to do a speech. So in saying that, I would like to thank, first of all, Clerk D. Jones reached out to me. I, I, I was on a highway. I heard a message, you know, and then so her speech, the, the words that D. Clerk D. Jones gave me end up being in my speech when I, when I had to speak at the funeral. I also would like to thank uh, the mayor. Uh, through the whole time, she, she knows how I can get. It's almost like she knows me like a son. She knows how moody I can get. And it was like she did not want to step over that boundary and, and bother, but she also kept trying to say, CEO, I'm here if you want to reach out and talk. So I'd like to thank that. I also want to thank Mr. McGee, who uh, my spiritual father. I mean, he was there the whole time, and he said some encouraging words. And he also told me, don't worry about you, Pete, when you get back. And actually, even Clark Jones, when some things I've seen in an email, Clark Jones said, did you think it was going to change just because you went to Mississippi for a funeral? I said, no, ma'am, you're right. And Clark Jones talked to me. Actually, she, she really, really helped me. And I just said, well, you know, thank you, Dee, because it was a moment. She just said, baby, if you got to cry, go to the corner, then come back and be the man you are. Uh, my board members, I would like to thank you all. Milton, I reached out to Milton because I may need a favor even for him. <laughs> I didn't think Milton would read back, but Milton came right back. It felt good to be way down in that red dirt and read Milton's email. So, you know, I would like to thank everyone. And then on that, I would close by saying that what made me feel good is that someone called and told me that Santa Claus needed help this uh, uh, next month. So I'm going to go take a trip and see uh, if Santa Claus can use my help. But other than that, I would like to say, uh, manager pay don't take nothing, anything. I have a group of notes for you that I come in with fresh eyes. I want to see these squad because it's things that I want to say. When I'm down south and I see a town that don't have nothing, but they make something, I think we can do the same thing. And I believe that that's the reason why the people elect me. She said they won't elect you because you're honest. And she said if they do elect you, because they know you honest. She said, I know you make a difference. So that's why she says, speak your mind, speak the truth, and do what you can for the University Park. So, and that, thank you all, and thank you again for all the condolences that came up and uh, through the emails and uh, telephone calls. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you for that, uh, Trustee. <laughs> all right. Um, I would like to say that. 
University Park is moving in wonderful ways. I had an opportunity two weeks ago to represent University Park at the, uh, at the uh, League of Cities, and it was hosted by um, the, the, the whole city was Los Angeles. I had an opportunity to meet the uh, mayor of Los Angeles and the mayor of Washington, D.C., and the mayor through Mayor Covington, she told me to get in contact with the mayor of uh, uh, Gary, and I also saw the mayor of Kankakee, and I also saw uh, the mayor of Halecrest there as well. And um, I had an opportunity, do you know what it's like to stay in the Marriott next door to the Staples Center? And you cannot go see LeBron play. <laughs> really? Thank God. <laughs> that, that, was, that was pretty tough. The tickets are really crazy. But it's one universal thing that I, that I can take from that particular um, symposium. That every small city in this country is going for the same thing. What do they want? They want decent housing, decent schools, and relatively nice taxes. And University Park has been marred in financial disarray for two decades. So it may not seem like we're making headway in University Park, but we are. It's, it's taken us a year and a half into our term, and as of uh, my buddy over there stated, that there are 567 days that, that we've been in office. but. It's taken a long time, so just be patient with us. We have a very decent rapport up here, and we, and we ran on that. And uh, that is going on right now. So I have a lot of respect for my colleagues, and I, had, and I spent a lot of time just to have a seat at this table. And I don't take that lightly, because all of the things that, that we had done to get up here, ask Mr. Brooks the pain of losing an election three times or two times and then actually being elected. So we take this very seriously. And I thank you all for coming out tonight. And Mr. Parks, my next door neighbor, he can be doing anything right now. It's so cold outside, but he's here with us tonight because he's concerned about our village. And right now, we're heading into the right direction. And uh, I'm very proud of my colleagues on this board and uh, directors of the department, and we are moving forward. That is my report. Um, Justin Payton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I just want to just, and I just want to really address the board that we've got a very important meeting tomorrow. This is a joint special board meeting uh, with the finance committee. Um, so tomorrow is the time to have your, you know, put, provide your input and, and get any questions answered that you may have because we'll have all the financial experts there tomorrow uh, that are working for our village. So I would encourage you, um, since Oprah's not in town anymore with Michelle, but, you know, the Lakers ain't playing, and we don't want to watch the Bulls. Uh, Trustee Payne, you had to uh, Trustee Payne, you had to speak for yourself about the Bulls. <laughs> yeah, I played pretty well. Um, I'd like to say uh, first, thanks for everybody for coming out, and I hope everyone had a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving. I don't have much of reporters, and but I do have a couple of recommendations that I'd like to make to you, Madam Mayor. The first would be. Uh, uh, please, for the uh, December meeting, could we have the, uh, I believe what we're calling the crime-free nuisance or crime nuisance or the house uh, crime-free housing <coughs> order based on the agenda? Yes, sir. That's and uh, the other recommendation I would uh, like to make is that in, rather than at the uh, board meetings, especially during bills payable, uh, bringing up equipment and other costs, maybe it would be a good idea at our committee to hold discussions is to bring up those various items that we do bring up during these uh, uh, bills payable. I uh, would bring up attorney's fees and in particular public works equipment. I think that would be a very good use and a very good time for uh, those points to be added to the discussion agenda. Um, 
I'm sorry, Dad. I hope um, I don't know if we're going to get a chance. To, but was it a regular meeting or a? Uh, it's going to be a regular meeting. Oh, in that case, I can hold off on wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. Uh, Trustee Wilson, Chair, one thing to add. I I just uh, it seems like I've been gone forever. I just want to say thank you, Chief Payne, about them trees. I know I've been a pain in your butt about them trees. So residents have been a pain. Um, but he, he got the grant, and I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the guy said they'd be willing to, to replace uh, trees every year until um, he would be able to replace tree, trees every year. He did mention that some of the trees have been cut down and were no longer a threat, and that one house he has <coughs> decorated, and they have been doing that in, all over Chicago. So some people can decorate um, the trees in front of their house, some people painted them, somebody else had things hanging on them because once the large limbs have been cut off, uh, they're no longer a threat or a danger. So thank you for, for getting the grant. Thanks for, um, to you and Keely for making sure it was a group enough, a, a large enough group of people to plant 50 trees because it was a lot of work on a very cold day. So I just want to say thank you for the grant. Thank you. Well, thank everyone for being here tonight. I'm very, very excited about this. I feel a little sore about the tree planting, um, <laughs> but it was fun. And thank you for the grant, for, um, Manager Pate. And it was, they said that for every one tree that they pushed down, we would receive two. And we did. We learned a lot because the people, the professionals were there helping us out. And Public Works was fantastic again there as well. They were ready, prepared. I mean, they were really, really great. They were, I mean, they were outstanding in the education that we received, and they gave us, and thank you, Ms. Anika Jenkins, for being there as well. I mean, the people learned a lot. I didn't know so many variations and reasons for the plants and the trees there, so that was a refreshing and enlightening, painful situation. Um, thank you, Trustee McMullen, for attending that. Um, you got a chance to meet all my friends, Mayor, Mayor Bauer from uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, we are working. Oh, and by the way, she was on television last night. Yes. Because of that, was it uh, her, oh, uh, her uh, work for her? For Washington. No, no, she was Which on one? a national television show. Uh, would you work for her or whatever? Uh, undercover work. Yeah, on the cover, cover ball. Ball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, they featured her. They yeah, do. They well, the whole city. That what happens is it's a little secret. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Brooks, they had uh, an officer. She looked prettier than you. Know. <laughs> they, they, they had her undercover boss. Yes, Gary and it. Yeah. Well, that, that's a part of the African American mayors and managers. Uh, I've been offered to be an undercover boss. I don't know when it's going to happen, but they select us randomly to do that, and another thing that Bowers is doing, Mayor Bowers is doing in Washington, D.C., they're fighting right now, and we're supporting her in trying to make Washington, D.C. a state. And it's yes, just, a hard battle. She, I know she talked about that. And I want to congratulate my friend Karen Freeman, which is a wonderful free free. Both of us were in office at the same time. She was nominated for a chairperson in the National League of Cities this year. Yeah, Who knows to her? Now. And she is now president, so I'm really happy that you met her. and. For you in Mississippi, uh, my friend, she's also a part of uh, the Black Mayors, African American Mayors Manager, Diane uh, Delaware. She's a mayor of Mississippi and she was campaigning the same thing when we had our rally when we were in Miami, Florida a few months ago. Um, that also, I want to report that. I was in Miami, Florida at my cost. Um, the mayors got together. They, Comcast asked me to come to the technical summit, which I attend every year. Uh, last year we were at um, John Marshall Law School and myself and what was that, oh God, Con Congresswoman Clark out of New York. She's very technical as well. And I'm doing this thing in my future, so it be it, um, Dream for University Park is open government. And they did some techno technology like, and I thought, I'm, I know I love it, but it's something that we're, I'm bringing to University Park that will help us be more efficient or open, it's open government. You will see everything day to day, and it's a, they did a presentation there that was fabulous. Uh, I was also in Lombard um, this, well, two weeks ago, in the morning, and they introduced us to the new CEO of ComEd, very nice guy, it was called the Leadership Summit for all leaders in, in the state of Illinois to meet him. He had a lot of ideas and things to offer us. And also, at that point, 
the person that represents us is Miss, uh, what's her name? Oh, Bonita, Bonita Parker is our rep here in the area. And we are getting a grant for the LED lights throughout the village. So it's the time for, it's the LED time for the Village of University Park. And that's going to be free for us. So, and your residential area will have LED lights, which will be helpful a lot. And they offered something else, which uh, is going to be a deterrent for burglars. That they said that a lot of people are stepping away from it. I said, no, we want it. So you will hear about that little act extra coming in too. Uh, the train station, I had Moni Township, I had Will County, I had Metro, I had, I'm on the transportation committee as well, and they did finally, with all my screaming and yelling, we will be getting a revision of our Metro station with the new elevator. It will be going on next year, a new revision of the Metro station finally for University Park. Also, the town center is going to be revised. We'll be getting a revision of the town center here as our, I love this board and they're working so wonderfully with me and we will be getting a new town center refacing. If you notice, we had a soft opening at the beauty salon there. A boutique from 87th Street is thinking about coming here, opening this unit over here. So we have a lot of people that are interested in this town center and I'm very happy when the upgrade of it will really help invite more people. I know you've noticed the new curves that we received in the village at no cost to the village. All these things, I-57, the one here, we're going to have a ribbon cutting so this Friday in the industrial park area. Um, that's why we got to have those trucks out there, and I hope as many of you can attend that will be there for the ribbon cutting for that. Uh, and also, I go back to the Miami, Florida trip was very, very good for me, and I brought back a lot as far as technology for the Village of University Park. I really want to see that happen so that everything will be online. Hopefully, in 2019, we will not have to do any money. Everything will be automated. There will be no money received in the town center anymore, so we're working on that process as we speak. Um, the giveaways from Industrial Park, um, what was the name of that company that came? They gave us the giveaways. IBEW. IBEW. And I don't know if you know that we're going to have a new opening with them. IBEW has opened in University Park, one of the late largest brotherhood for electronic, this was called, Illinois electrician workers, whatever, IBEW is. And they have one on the outset, but this one in University Park is even larger. We've received, since this board's been here, we've received three new companies in University Park. And that's something that we're going to open up to the public and let you do a tour and walk through there. We'll be programming that up so everyone will see what we have back there. I'm really happy they gave away, which the Human Service Specialty Business Committee was going to work with, but they came and gave us turkeys, stuffings, potatoes, sweet potato, uh, apple pies, corn, string beans, and mashed potatoes, and pot. So we gave, it, we split it between the two churches. We gave to half the First Baptist, and we gave the other part to Faith Movers. So they were so happy to get this, because I know First Baptist prepared the food and cooked it. So they got additional whole dinners to cook, and they were very grateful that at the senior building, and the other one to the giveaway baskets for Faith Movers. So they were very, very happy that we were in the University of Park was able to donate that. Halloween, I was a cowboy. I think I was a cowboy. Yeah, I was a cowboy. After we planted the trees, we went home, changed, we did the Superman stunts, and we changed clothes, the motorcycle kid over here, and me, the motorcycle, and the cowboy. We had a lot of fun, thanks for the donations from the board that was there, and we really enjoyed that. So, with that said, that's my report. I will keep working for this village as passionate as possible. I am very, very grateful for the honesty here on this board. You hear things here. It's a hard decision sometimes to make, but we work together. I love them. They're working good. And as Trustee Brooks said, and I appreciate them so much for that, and Trustee McMullen and all, we're not up here disrespecting. We stay here. We're honest. We're working things out. If it's not good, it's just not good. I'm sorry. I have to announce these. So South Suburban Mayor Managers, uh, they have December 1st, 2nd, 3rd, the 26th through the 31st. They have some free discount tickets, which I will be, will be on our cable station. And anyone who want to see it, they have tickets for Six Flags. And a lot of high post rate writers. Right? So if you want any tickets, just contact us and she'll give you that information. Also, 
there was um, USDA Food Agriculture, or the, nah, 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 I forget about what I was doing with that one, but they're doing some funding opportunities. CMAP has a lot of opportunities that I will be putting on the website of far as jobs and Connecting American Veterans opportunity. The, uh, today we paused to remember the veterans. We had did that and I was really passionate about that and you all understand that. But they have a new video which I shared with um, Ms. Jenkins to put on site. They are hiring right now. You'll see it on our cable station. They talked to me about it. I'm sharing it. It came from Comcast. Uh, the head of Comcast was there with me in tech, the Tech Summit. And it's a new thing they're doing for veterans to make sure that they are secure with jobs. They're doing training, jobs, anything, any age, contact, look at this video and please make contact with them. And the benefits are definitely changing and you will see that because I am 100% for what they do and how they do and they fall in the category of our policemen and our fire and our public works. Those are dangerous jobs and I really appreciate all of them for what they do. And with that said, I thank you all for helping me at the holiday fun and family and please pray for us and I love each and every one of you and you can't do anything about it. I ask for an adjournment. So moved oh. we'll by Trustee Second. Wilson, second by Trustee Brooks. Is there any second question? Yes. Hearing none, I ask for an adjournment. Um, roll call. Oh. Trustee Wilson. Trustee Wilson. Aye. Trustee Brooks. Aye. Trustee Mac Mullen. Trustee Casey. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Both sides. Somebody.